my name is Mansoor Khan and uh, I work in the Department of Electrical and Computer Engineering at Comstock University Islamabad. Now in this brief presentation I'll talk about how a low noise and a highly efficient switching class E amplifier can be used to drive CMUT for wider bandwidth of operation. Now class E amplifiers are inherently non-linear because uh, they can uh, they can generate any arbitrary output waveform. Uh, and uh, driving a CMAT load, which is inherently a non-linear capacitor in which the transduction force, you know, is proportional to the square of the voltage, uh, you don't uh, have to use a linear amplifier for that because that's going to, if a linear amplifier is going to derive a non-linear load, then you'll, you're going to have uh, harmonic distortion, okay? So a uh, class C amplifier can be used as a low noise and a highly efficient um, amplifier uh, instead of class A and B amplifiers to drive CMUT for, for a wider bandwidth of operation. Now, how it is done is, uh, well, I'll talk about first uh, how a uh, class C amplifier can be designed for uh, for, an, uh, for an arbitrary, uh, let's say, a resistive load for, for low fractional noise, or low fractional loss, um, because the, the load happens to be an important design parameter of, uh, of any general amplifier. Uh, how much is the, for example, how much voltage string is required, or what is the output power, or uh, how much harmonic distortion uh, requirements are there. These has to be met in, in any general amplifier design. Okay, so I'll talk about how this can be designed for uh, to produce a low fractional uh, loss. Then um, class E amplifiers can be designed, can as well be designed with a very high Q series resonant circuits output to produce a low harmonic output. So uh, I'll show you that you will have a very large dynamic range. Uh, the second harmonic is like 25, 30 dB down the first harmonic. So class E amplifier can have a very low harmonic output, okay. And uh, then uh, uh, CMUTs in this uh, study are going to be represented by uh, lump circuit uh, model, uh, which is which is, a, which is just, just a circuit model consisting of lumped circuit elements, which are representative of uh, the distributed quantities of CMUTs, like uh, the transduction force, uh, membrane compliance, uh, radiation resistance, and then you have the deflected membrane capacitance, okay? So as a consequence of this model, we are going to have, uh, and we can, we, can, we can extract the input impedance of CMUT cells by driving the circuit model with a, with a voltage source and the input impedance of CMUT cell is the ratio of that uh, input voltage to the current that the cell draws. So um, we'll, we'll have the input impedance as a function of frequency and then the input impedance of the cell for the given geometrical parameters gives a lot of information like uh, resonance frequency, the bandwidth, um, and any losses associated with the, with the cement. Okay. Then, uh, as a as a um, part of this lump circuit model, we have radiation resistance uh, in which the caustic port of the circuit is terminated that represents the power radiated into the medium. Uh, so we have, uh, if you understand from the uh, this lump circuit element, uh, cement is, is a non-linear capacitor, okay? So, based on its structure, it's a, uh, it's a capacitive load with uh, real resistance that represents the radiation resistance, okay? So, at any frequency, it can be represented by uh, radiation resistance and, and a capacitance, okay? Then, uh, uh, what we have is an impedance transformation that we need to do between um, an impedance transformation network is required between uh, the amplifier, the output of the amplifier and the input of the cement cell to transform this reactive impedance to, let's say, uh, the real design load for which the amplifier uh, lumped element has to be found out or for, 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 for which the class E amplifier has to be designed. And you will, uh, and I'll, I'll talk about how this, uh, what is the effect of this transformed radiation impedance. And if one has to make a trade-off between radiated power and the operating bandwidth, how it can be done. Uh, what is the effect of, for example, what is the effect of uh, large uh, transform loads on the design of a class E amplifier? And what is what, what are the effect of the radiated power and the uh, bandwidth of cement operation? So I'll, I'll talk about how the uh, this transformation affects the design of amplifier and what effects uh, it has on the operating bandwidth of CMUT. Okay, so uh, this is a basic topology of class E amplifier, and uh, what you what you're looking at over here is that it doesn't has any any AC source. Okay, so there's a battery, 
uh, which is connected to an AC choke, large inductance, and then you have a have a JFET or it could be a MOSFET as well, uh, which is being used as a switch. Okay, so there's a square wave type that is driving the gate of the JFET, and as the uh, pulse comes in, uh, the JFET turns on, and this R is representative of the uh, switching resistance. Okay, so you can see uh, we. We do have a have a. It's, it's, it's like we we are having a switch that is being controlled on and off by the square wave drive. Uh, when the pulse when the pulse is there, you have the switch uh, closed and turn on position. And when the uh, when there is no pulse, the circuit is open. Okay. So when the once the switch is closed, this resistance is small enough, so it shorts out the current capacitance C one, which is representing the uh, for example in megahertz operations and higher frequency represent the parasitic drain to source capacitance of the transistor. So it includes CDS, for example, the drain source capacitance. So what happens is that uh, when the switch is closed, uh, we have a small switching for small, small switching resistance. Uh, most of the current flows through this branch and the capacitor is shorted out. That means the, the AC choke is going to uh, store energy. So V1 is shorted out for that uh, part of the duration of the, uh, of the, of the gate cycle. Um, but when the pulse is absent, the switch is open, this uh, AC choke is going to supply the energy to the rest part, to the rest of the circuit, okay? Because once, once the, once the uh, gate pulse is there, it's going to uh, uh, make, make the inductor store the energy, and once the switch is off, the inductor is going to supply, to the, uh, supply energy to the rest part of the circuit, rest of the circuit. So it turns out that V1T is going to consist of rounded pulses. Okay, this capacitor charges up, and then once the switch closes, the capacitor there's no abrupt discharge because uh, uh, C1 is shorted out once transistor on. So, so let, let's have a look. This um, uh, this is a simulated output of this uh, nodal voltage is V1, and uh, against the transistor gate pulse. So when once you have the gate pulse arriving at the um, at the input of the transistor then uh, going to a very small switching resistance R, uh, the transistor turns on, the switch is closed. So as a, re as a result of that, V1 is zero. Okay, the nodal voltage V1 is zero. So you don't have anything over here. So transistor is on in this part of the cycle. And once the um, uh, switch opens, uh, then there's no gate pulse. You have the rounded pulse, okay? So the capacitor charges up, okay? So it's like the transistor is off over here, so you have a rounded pulse. And uh, as um, as the next pulse arrives, the again you have a, uh, a short-circuited nodal voltage V1. The capacitor C1 shorts out, and this trend continues. Okay, so it's a periodic consists of periodic rounded pulses. But the good thing is that it doesn't the amplifier configuration doesn't uh, involves any uh, lossy discharge due to the shunt capacitance C1, because one over two CV square the loss due to this capacitance uh, is zero. When the when the when the uh, when the switch is on, okay. So uh, this is what goes on at the node voltage V1, and then further to that, uh, we have a high skew series LC circuit, which uh, whose resonance is set by the component values of L2 and C2, and the combination of that at which the resonance occurs. The, this uh, series uh, section is a short circuit, and uh, it supplies maximum energy to the load, okay. And this load is is our CMUT load. So what happens is that uh, if you have a very high Q uh, LC circuit, which is represented by omega L2 by RL for a series LC circuit, if Q is large, if Q is large, they're going to pass a very good sine wave without any harmonics to the load. Okay. So, uh, well, the purpose of uh, showing these design equations for this amplifier is, is just to show that these all lumped components L2 and C2 C1, which are the part of this amplifier, are in terms of the uh, the load parameter, which happens to be the most important part of the uh, uh, amplifier for which you are going to design uh, the class E amplifier. Okay, so for example, uh, the impedance looking uh, on to the series RLC, series RLC, the RLC section is given by the ratio of the node voltage to the uh, load current, series load current, and that consists of both uh, reactive parts and the real parts. And then IC1 is, for example, is the current through the shunt capacitor, which can be represented as uh, the current through the choke minus uh, the current through the load. And since the switching occurs at t equal to zero, so if, if you just uh, uh, plug this condition 
and this above equation called tf0, we'll find out that this uh, is, is, uh, is can be determined in terms of the load and output voltage and the current through the uh, inductor, okay? So the node voltage, uh, well, you can integrate uh, this equation and you can find out uh, the node voltage as such. So uh, since this node voltage is periodic and uh, what this section is going to do is it's going to filter out, for example, if you need a fundamental component, uh, obviously the, the wave is periodic, so it can be represented in terms of Fourier series. So if you have to extract, for example, the fundamental component, uh, then you can find this out by, from the Fourier integral. And uh, it's going to give you, uh, for the frequency of interest, uh, the, one of the Fourier components. And in this case, it's the fundamental component. So evaluating the Fourier integral and setting the ratio, if, uh, if you again divide this by IL, and uh, you compare the uh, both post, uh, imaginary and real sides of the equation, you'll find out that uh, the lump components are uh, very simply they, they come out in terms of the uh, load parameter. Okay, so if so, what what I'm trying to explain is that if you have uh, to design the class C amplifier, it has to be designed for a particular load. Okay, depending on that load, uh, you will have the lump components. For example, C1. C2, the shunt capacitance C1, C2, which is the part of the series RLC circuit, and uh, the lump component L2 can be found out from the quality factor of the uh, series LC section. Now, uh, L1, on the other hand, is, is the large AC inductance, is the large AC choke, which can be set to, for example, 10 times or more uh, for uh, um, to pass no AC experience, so it's, it's, it's an AC choke, it's going to uh, supply a DC current. So, uh, for example, the value of the AC choke inductance can be set to 10 times the value of the inductor L2. That is for, for if you set, for example, Q equal to 10, then L1 can be set to 100 times of uh, RL. Okay, so if Q is 10, then you have this as 100 times RL because L2 is set to 10 times that of L1. Okay, so you see everything. Uh, is being described for this class E amplifier in terms of uh, the load resistance RL. Okay, uh, even if you are interested to find the, for example, the friction loss. Friction loss in the class E amplifier is defined as the ratio of the switching loss to the power that is uh, delivered to the load. So, for example, if you if you wish to write this current which uh, uh, which is there, which uh, which passes through the JFET when, once the transistor is conducting and uh, this transistor is help, helping the stored energy. That can be represented as IDC minus the load current. And if you have to take the average of the switching loss, you can take this as I square R, where R is a non-zero uh, finite switching resistance of the JFET. And we have this switching uh, loss in the, in the circuit as a function of this switching resistance. If, is, if R is zero, you don't have any switching loss, right? So uh, to, to print the friction loss of the class E circuit, the ratio of the switching loss to the power delivered to the load can be expressed as such. And you can see that for a very small switching resistance R and large load resistance, uh, if, for example, uh, you have to design this amplifier for large load, load resistance, or if on uh, the idea is that if you can transform the radiation resistance of the transducer to higher loads through LC matching circuits, let's say, matching sections, then uh, you're, you're going to have a design of amplifier that is going to have a very low fraction loss, okay? As an example, let's say, um, let's consider the same scenario when the input gate pulse is 50% uh, duty cycle of one megahertz consisting of, let's say, 512 harmonics. Uh, the gate pulse is, is controlling the transistor as a switch. So a steady state solution of the node voltage V1 and the load voltage is found as the sum of the fundamental components and its harmonics. So harmonic analysis of the circuit, uh, in this case, has been done in advanced design systems, which is Keysight from Keysight Technologies, a commercially available uh, circuit simulation software. So uh, to generate a perfect sinusoidal load voltage, for example, for, for uh, one megahertz operation frequency with minimal harmonic content, if you set the quality factor to 10 for a given load of 50, you'll find out that this L2, uh, this... Uh, uh, inductance L2 is 79.6 uh, microhenries, and since the AC choke is like 10 times, if you make it like 18 times, and L1 is about 1 millihenries, C1 and C2 are next found for the same frequency at 50 ohm load, 
as 584 picofarads in terms of the same load at the same frequency, then you have the uh, series. Uh, this is the shunt capacitance C1. This is a series uh, LC capacitance C2, which is again found out in terms of the load as 360 picofarad. So uh, the idea behind to show this example is to illustrate that the lumped components of class E amplifier can be found out in terms of uh, the design load at a particular frequency. Now, uh, you see this, uh, if you set a very high Q, you can have a, have a nice tonal signal like this, uh, which, has a, which has a large dynamic range. You see the, uh, the second harmonic is like uh, minus, uh, it's like 25 dB down the fundamental component of uh, 1 megahertz at which the amplifier is designed. And the fraction loss for 50 ohm load, and if the switching <coughs> resistance is set to 0.5, is just only 1.4%. So it's, it's a highly efficient amplifier. Okay? It's, it's a low noise amplifier. And uh, if higher loads are used, that means if the cement membrane is loaded by the medium, let's say water, uh, then you have a higher load, which is going to help you make this system have less traction uh, loss or noise. So we need a metric section for that to transform the radiation resistance. So let's have a look um, how we can do, but first, uh, I'll briefly talk about the uh, lump circuit model of CMUD. So this diagram uh, shows the geometrical, important geometrical parameters of CMUD element. What you have here is a um, silicon membrane, which is uh, clamped at both sides rigidly, not allowed to move at the posts over here. And uh, over, it is allowed to move <clears throat> under the influence of the ambient force and the applied uh, electric field, which is uh, applied uh, in between the bottom electrode and the, uh, um, and, the, and, the, and, the and the silicon membrane, okay? This, uh, well, this particular, uh, the dark uh, layer is, is silicon oxide, which acts as an insulator. So in case you have a collapsing of this membrane against the bottom electrode, uh, it prevents the short circuiting, okay? And this thickness is represented by Ti, which is the insulation thickness. <clears throat> so uh, Tm represents the membrane thickness, which is the moving part of CMUD. Uh, R is the radial position of the membrane. X, X of R is the profile. So the capacitance of this concentric ring, the, which has a radius of A, uh, is dependent on this profile, right? So the capacitance is a function of uh, the profile. Over here, you, you see the incremental capacitance or very small section dr uh, for which the profile is as such x of r so how you find this capacitance is in terms of um, the profile so for x of r, the profile is going to define the deflected capacitance of the of the cement membrane okay all right so um, you see for uh, in radiating plates uh, the the profile can be approximated for uh, well for, for thin, radiating, thin radiating plates which which is being depressed by a uniform force it can be represented in terms of its uh, radial variable r as one minus r square over a square whole square when r is small compared to the aperture size of the uh, circular plate then uh, this profile can be used to uh, derive the deflected capacitance for, for example this is the uh, incremental capacitance, and if you take the area, this is R dr. Okay, this is a very small area which we are considering. Uh, TGE is the effective gap height. Well, it's not TG, it's uh, TG plus di in terms of the electrical length of the gap because you have a capacitance uh, CG, which is the gap capacitance. You have a capacitor CG, and then you have in series with that another capacitance which is produced by silicon dioxide. Let's call this CI. So the uh, series combination of this is going to produce an electrical length, which is TGE, not TG, but TGE, okay? If you work out this uh, uh, series capacitance, you will find out that uh, the effective gap height is uh, TG plus TI over Telenor, okay? So it's just like the difference of the gap height of the capacitor between the plates minus the profile. And uh, if you take the area in the numerator, you'll find out the incremental capacitance for the section DR. Now, if you have to find the complete capacitance, well, you have to integrate this over the entire, uh, say, uh, 
size of the membrane, okay, the pressure radius is A. If you do that, you find out that this comes out uh, in terms of transcendental G functions, okay, uh, where G of X is rendered as tan hyperbolic inverse of square root X and X, X is the argument of the function, uh, which is the normalized uh, variable XP by DG. XP represents the peak deflection of the plate. TG is the effective gap height. And C0 is the undeflected membrane capacitance, okay? It's not a function of the profile, it's a constant. It depends on the geometric parameters like aperture size and the gap height and the insulation thickness. So uh, if you plug this into the model, so you see we have an undeflected cement capacitance over here. Uh, on, the, on the left side, we have the electrical side of the cement. And if there is any change in the capacitance, we have... Uh, uh, this representation given by the current IC. So this IC represents uh, the change in uh, membrane capacitance. And on the membrane, the change in uh, membrane velocity is being represented by uh, IV, that is the velocity current, okay. particle velocity. So the left-hand side of the circuit model represents the electrical section of the transducer. The right-hand side models the mechanical section of the cement membrane. By the mechanical section, it means the the mem moving membrane, which is being represented on the right hand side. So you have the transduction force FR, and uh, then there's a through variable, which represents the particle velocity, uh, which is given by the uh, differential of the profile, d by dt of x of R. And you have the plate compliance, which is linear. Uh, the mass of the plate is represented by um, the inductance, LRM. And the radiation resistance is represented by ZRR. So this is the caustic port, uh, which is being terminated in its self-radiation impedance. Um, FRI is the dynamic force, and FRB is the static ambient pressure. Okay. So FRI is the uh, dynamic incident force, which is being represented by an AC source. So you see on the mechanical side, on the right-hand side of the circuit, uh, the force has an analogy with the uh, voltage source, okay? So if you have, for example, a constant force, a constant DC source, it is being represented by a constant DC source. If it's a dynamic force, it being represented by um, uh, an, an AC voltage source, okay? Just like the construction force, then for FRI, we have uh, another uh, AC source over here. So uh, in the circuit model, C0, again, is an undeflected cell capacitance, and the current IC counts for the change in cell capacitance, going to change in membrane deflection. Then we have uh, uh, IV, which is the current arising from the membrane velocity in the mechanical side. CRM is the plate compliance, and LRM is the mass of the membrane. Uh, CRM, again, is a, is a linear compliance uh, up until the plate touches the membrane, where the compliance becomes nonlinear as a function of profile. But as long as uh, the deflection is small, uh, the membrane uh, operates in, in elastically linear regime, the, I mean, if the deflection is small, it can be represented by a constant capacitance, which comes out in terms of the geometrical parameters of cement, like the membrane thickness, young modulus of the membrane material, uh, Poisson ratio, and the aperture size, okay? So we have a linear compliance. So you can say that the membrane obeys uh, Hooke's law, okay? Compliance is, is the inverse of the spring constant. Um, so uh, LRM, again, is the mass of the membrane, uh, which stays preserved in the model, and that is represented by pi square rho m. Rho m is the uh, density of the membrane material. Tm is the thickness of the membrane. Okay, so it stays constant. <clears throat> then uh, the through variable uh, is a special RMS velocity of the membrane, which is represented as the, um, uh, the particle velocity is represented by the differential of the uh, membrane profile as a function of time. And uh, since we are talking of RMS, particle velocity, so that is that is obtained from by squaring the uh, the profile as a function of time when there is a deflection as a function of radial variable and time, and then dividing this by area and taking the square root. So this is the RMS membrane uh, particle velocity. FR is the corresponding construction force with FRB and FRO are the forces resulting from static pressure and transmitted force generated at a coastal terminal. So you can see the transduction force, which is obtained from the uh, energy in the concentric ring, 1 over 2 CV squared, is uh, proportional to the, uh, for example, this transduction force is proportional to the square of the voltage. So that means uh, <coughs> you have an inherent non-linearity to the transduction force. The force is proportional to the square of the voltage, okay? 
So usually, in uh, if you find out in literature, uh, the pro the receiver transducers as transmitters are uh, usually driven at half frequencies, so that you can have an acoustic output at resonance. Let's say, okay. So the force, uh, so the transduction force makes uh, the CMET inherently nonlinear. Okay. There are other uh, nonlinearities in this uh, pedal plate capacitor, CMET, uh, and the other nonlinearities they can be dealt of the uh, of the compliance, if the plate collapses with the uh, with the with the with the substrate, but this is not the case over here. This is uncollapsed, and then you have the radiation resistance, okay, which is again a nonlinear resistance with the uh, as a function of frequency, and uh, this is representative of how much uh, force is radiated uh, by the plate. Because if you take uh, voltage squared multiplied by ZRR, it gives you the the power output, the acoustic power output, okay, in the model. So, for example, uh, for a certain velocity profile, the self radiation impedance of the transducer is formed by considering the ratio of total radiated power to the square of absolute value of non zero reference velocity. So, if you multiply ZR with the uh, uh, with the membrane velocity, it gives you the total radiated power. And for a rigidly clamped circular radiator, uh, the self radiation impedance of a, for example, a piston radiator is well studied. And if the reference velocity is shown to be the RMS velocity, like we have uh, shown before, in this case, if the particle velocity is RMS, then this uh, RMS, uh, in terms of this RMS particle velocity, the radiation resistance can be expressed in terms of the uh, acoustic impedance of the radiated medium multiplied by the area of the membrane, radiating membrane. So in terms of uh, frequency, that is the wave number, uh, you have this radiation impedance in... Uh, uh, in terms of frequency, where F1 and F2 are, are consist of uh, Bessel and Struve functions of uh, first order. So, uh, rho and C are the medium density and the speed of the sound, and F1 and F2 contain the Bessel and Struve functions of first order. Here, here is a plot of uh, radiation resistance of a, uh, of a circular, circular piston radiator having aperture size A, and this is a normalized radiation resistance which shows the real part. The function of frequency and then an imaginary part, uh, which is the reactive, and uh, it's just there to uh, facilitate the propagation of sound in the medium. Uh, real part represents how much real power has been coupled to the radiating medium, and you can see this uh, resistance or impedance is uh, a non linear function of frequency, it's not a linear resistance. Okay, so as a function of k, a which k, where k is the wave number is the aperture size of the clamp radiator. Uh, ZRR is a nonlinear function of frequency. Okay, so this is another nonlinearity source in your model. The model is nonlinear, so uh, you cannot do a linear circuit analysis for the uh, for the circuit. Okay, you have to go out for a for nonlinear analysis, maybe harmonic balance analysis. So um, for the purpose of this, uh, for the purpose of demonstrating the uh, the analysis and the design of a CMET, uh, first, not the design of CMET, the design of amplifier, which is going to derive the CMET, we, we consider these symmetrical parameters so that the membrane uh, radius is about 50 microns, membrane thickness is about 2 microns, gap height is 0.8 micrometers, insulation layer is uh, TI is about 100 nanometers, 0.1 microns. And for these parameters, uh, if you calculate the glass voltage at which the membrane is going to touch the substrate, it's about 150 volts, 146 volts. And if you apply a DC volt, which is about 10% uh, of glass voltage, you'll have a deflection, okay? And these parameters, young modulus and the silicon plate density are the material properties, where ER is the dielectric constant of silicon dioxide. So, <coughs> the for these geometrical parameters, uh, once they are set, you have, uh, for example, uh, the lump component defined in terms of those geometrical parameters. So, CRM, for example, is the compliance of the plate in terms of these geometrical parameters in the circuit. LRM is the mass of the plate, and uh, C naught is the undeflected capacitance. Okay, and once you apply um, an electrical signal, then of course the deflection changes, and due to those change in deflection, you have a change in capacitance, which is being represented by the current IC. Uh, owing to the change in particle velocity, you have another current source, which is IV. The transduction force is proportional to the square of this voltage, 
and it appears as an AC source on the mechanical side. <coughs> FRI is any incident dynamic force which is being intercepted uh, as an incoming ultrasound, for example, on the membrane for which you account for another deflection. Uh, FRB is a static ambient force which deflects the membrane, which, which, is, which is normally uh, either the atmospheric pressure or hydrostatic pressure if cements are being operated uh, underwater. So this is a constant DC source. Okay, so once once these uh, lumped elements are defined as such in terms of geometrical parameters, and uh, the vortex signal is applied, and this circuit is set up in a in a, in a, in a circuit simulator. So as a consequence of, of this circuit, if you apply a voltage source, for example, which is um, let's say a voltage source is applied of a certain amplitude, and you sweep the frequency, then you can have a in input impedance of a cement cell. Okay, so for example, this, the frequency for these geometrical parameters are being swept from uh, 2.6 megahertz to 3.4 megahertz, and the resonance is being recorded at 3 megahertz. Mm -hmm. And uh, you can see that at resonance, you have a large <coughs> capacitive reactant. So this load has a real part. Uh, so this red one is uh, the real resistance. The resistance is coming. You see, the, the model itself doesn't have any loss. We are not considering any backing loss. We are not considering any friction losses, which you might have because of there's some trapped air inside the circular cavity. Uh, we don't have any resistive losses other than the radiation resistance, okay, which has, of course, we have seen the real part, uh, which is responsible for uh, the caustic radiation. So uh, we have the real part, uh, which is printed in red. This is the radiation resistance. And then we have the um, the imaginary capacitive reactants, you can see that this, uh, you have the negative uh, capacitive reactants on the uh, on the blue axis, which is written by the dotted uh, line. So you can see that the capacitive part is predominant. Okay, it's, uh, it's dominant because of the structure of uh, human cell that is expected. So at particular frequency of three megahertz, uh, what it is, it is representing is is a is a real load with uh, let's say in series with the capacitive load, and at that part, at particular frequency of 3 megahertz, which is the resonance, you have a, it represents a capacitance of 0.087 picofarads, and uh, the resistance, a series resistance of, let's say, 4.16 tens or 4 ohms, and that represents the uh, resistance that the medium is giving the membrane for radiation, okay? Um, so, what, uh, we propose in this uh, scenario is that okay, CMET is a capacitive load predominantly with with radiation resistance. Okay, real part comes in. Um, we need to transform this load. So in order to make the load um, appear as a real resistive load for which usually the amplifiers are designed. Okay, because if for example uh, you have a nonlinear capacitor uh, which is being which is which is intercepting, for example, dynamic AC signals, dynamic uh, ultrasound signals, and uh, the capacitance is changing. It's just like, for example, the polarization of capacitor is, uh, is is as such that you don't have a linear relationship between the charge and the voltage. It's a nonlinear capacitor. It's a nonlinear load. Then uh, driving that load uh, with a, with an amplifier which has an output impedance which which might be real. Uh, or if it is a linear amplifier, uh, it serves no purpose because you're going to have a lot of harmonic content and that is going to uh, to, to compromise the radiated power. So what we uh, propose over here is to have a, have a simple LC matching section, which is first going to eliminate the capacitive part of the cement, the reactive part of cement, and transform the radiation resistance without changing, without uh, putting the cement in some other radiation medium. We're just going to transform the radiation resistance to any particular load value of the class E amplifier. And uh, then class E amplifier is designed for that load. And uh, this transformation, this transform load is going to define the bandwidth of the operation of, of CMERT as well as its radiated power, okay? So class E amplifier is next designed for the transform CMERT load impedance. And impedance transformation is usually done for the, for the matching criteria. You have the conjugate matching criteria so that, for example, RS and XS are the transform load impedance of cement at resonance at a single frequency. So it has to match with the, uh, with the input impedance of um, cement, okay? And uh, XS 
uh, which is the transform load of symmetric resonance is negative because you have to cancel the reactive part, which is the capacitive reactance. So it has to be the negative of CMAT uh, capacitance. Okay. So as, as a consequence of this uh, conjugate matter criteria, we have the equations for uh, to evaluate the lump components of the matching network uh, inductance and capacitance at a particular frequency. And uh, it turns out that uh, the quality factor is defined in terms of the transducer uh, impedance. Rt is the real part of the transducer impedance. Xt is the imaginary part of the uh, reactants. So once the Q is set, you can use this Q in the equations. And uh, if you have to simplify, if, you, if there is no uh, reactive impedance, if this is zero, well, this equation is greatly simplified. And you can find out the uh, values of the inductor and capacitances from the transducer uh, resistor, uh, resistance and reactances from these equations. So for example, uh, if you have to transform the CMAT imp impedance to a 50 ohm load, and then you have to use the strictium load to design a class C circuit, then the quality of match works out to be about 424. It's a high Q match. And this yields uh, the match element values as 1.12 millihenries and uh, the capacitance as 2.44 picofarads in this configuration. So what happens is that this uh, 4 into 10 to the power 4 uh, ohm, that is the radiation resistance, is transformed to 50 ohm design load with no capacitive reactance, you see this is zero over here, this, uh, um, it, that means the capacitive part is cancelled by the by the matching section and what you are going to have is a, just a real load at the class E amplifier for which the class E amplifier is to be designed, okay, with no uh, reactive part which uh, uh, which is going to compromise or which is going to compromise the radiative power and uh, produce harmonic distortions. Okay, so we don't need that. So we have cancelled the reactive part and we have transformed the radiation resistance to any desired load for which the class E amplifier is to be designed. Now, if you, uh, these are these are some values of uh, uh, design load R in ohms and uh, uh, and these are the lumped components of uh, uh, class E amplifier, uh, which, are, which are already defined in terms of the load. Q is the quality factor of the series uh, resonant circuit, which is set to 100 in all the cases. So as you go on increasing the transform load value, well, the first thing you are going to see is, is that you're going to reduce the fraction loss of uh, the CMET and amplifier system. And uh, at the same time, you're going to increase the bandwidth. For example, for a 10 ohm transform load, if you go all the way up until 500 ohms, you're going to increase the transform load to 500 ohms. Then the bandwidth increases, okay. But at the same time, the radiative power decreases. So there is a trade-off between the radiative power and the bandwidth, because what happens is that if you have a higher load, then the plate velocity current decreases, okay. And as a result of that, uh, in the model, if the velocity current reduces, for example, over here, if this current reduces, then uh, this V R squared, this current time squared multiplied by the by the uh, radiation resistance, is going to produce a small uh, output force or small radiated output pressure. Uh, so higher design loads are are uh, are favored when you when you require a wider bandwidth of operation or low noise, uh, low pressure noise working of the class E amplifier with CMAT load. But uh, the radiated power decreases for higher design loads because the plate velocity current is decreasing. Okay. Uh, on the other hand, if uh, uh, the load is small, the transform load is small, the plate current increases, and for the same radiation resistance as a function of frequency, you're going, you're going to have more radiated power or more ultrasound output. So, um, so it, again, the, the first of all, the class E amplifier is, uh, the lump components for class E amplifier are totally dependent on the, uh, the values of the, uh, of the transform load. Uh, for which you are transforming the radiation resistance because the radiation resistance is uh, is not changed due to the uh, medium which is being changed. It is being transformed by simply by the matching section and the transform impedance has an effect that uh, it affects the radiated power as well as the bandwidth of the cement. Okay, so um, this the effect of the, the load on the radiated power can be appreciated by this 
uh, magnitude response of this is the magnitude of the baller uh, of the CMUT versus frequency in megahertz and you see around the resonance how the band versus for example if you if you have a 10 ohm uh, if you have a smaller transform load and if you compare this with the 500 ohm load you can see that radio power is much smaller but the 3 dB band width increases <clears throat> and this increases it's four times for example over here this is about 14 kilohertz so, oh, okay this is about uh, not four times about three times to increase the the bandwidth of the radiated power at the same time you decrease the uh, noise of the amplifier so uh, high loads high transform loads are favored uh, they like that they, they they tend to increase the operational bandwidth of CMUT but at the same time they reduce the output power okay so uh, the effects are because if you compare the rated power, it suggests that the lower design load produce more rated power. Reasons for lower rated power is associated with the smaller plate vibrations. As CMUT is transformed to higher load, this is modeled by decreasing plate velocity current we are in the model. And uh, for higher design loads, CTV bandwidth increases. Okay, So hence, depending on the requirement uh, of an application, a trade-off has to be made between a wider bandwidth and a rated output power. For example, a 3 dB bandwidth, which is produced by a 500 ohm load, <coughs> is just 44 kilohertz, which is compared to 14 kilohertz by a 10 ohm load. So, hence, a wide bandwidth operation of CMUT is achieved just through the transformation of load without physically altering the loading conditions of CMUT membrane. So, you don't have to move CMUT from one uh, <coughs> operating radiation medium to another uh, ambient medium. Uh, it's just the transformation of the CMUT load for which the class E amplifier can be designed for low noise performance as well as wider bandwidth of operation. So the power at the same time decreases dramatically from 4.92 to 0.14 microwatts at the same frequency than if you have to design all the way down to 10 ohms. Okay, uh, If you design it to 500 ohms, the power decreases. Okay, So from 10 ohm, it is 4.92 microwatts. If you start at 10 ohm load, if it is a 500, micro, 500 ohms transform load, then the power decreases. But the bandwidth increases about three folds at 44 kilohertz. Okay, so implying higher design loads improve the low noise performance of the amplifier as well. The fraction loss of the amplifier is just 0.14 percent, which means if such CMUTs are to be used as implantable devices, uh, it's going to conserve the class E amplifier is going to conserve the DC battery for a for a larger amount of time, and uh, for 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 let's say for medical imaging, you have, you're, you're going to have for high transform loads, you're going to have wider bandwidth, which is going to help in diagnostics, let's say. So the pressure loss of the amplifier, again, is very small compared to 6.8% with a, with a small, uh, small transform load. Okay. So the idea is to, to design a class E amplifier in terms of the load. And since CMUT load is an inherently nonlinear uh, capacitor, so there's no need of uh, driving such nonlinear load by a linear amplifier because that's going to produce harmonics. Uh, we don't need that. That's going to reduce the rated power anyways. So what we can have is a, is a switching amplifier, which is uh, highly efficient. And uh, if it has to be used in biomedical applications or implantable applications. It's going to conserve the battery life. That's one. The second thing is that uh, the pressure loss is very small. Okay, so these are, these are very highly efficient uh, uh, amplifiers. And uh, you can improve the bandwidth of CMUT operation by simply transforming the radiation resistance to any desired uh, amplifier design load. Okay, so that's all.